Hey, Damien here for Automo Superstore. This time around, it's Alpine's Halo floating screen ILX F509A head unit that has Android Auto, digital radio, and wireless Apple CarPlay. Let's have a look. So first of all, what comes in the package? Alpine systems always have a lot of stuff in their packaging, and so there's a bit to go through on these because floating units are a bit more complicated to install than a regular single or doubled in head unit. First of all, the main unit itself comes in two parts. There's the chassis that mounts in your dash, and then the screen itself. They'll come separate, and you actually bolt those together and put the connector together to make the electrical connection. Aside from that, there are a bunch of wiring looms. The main wiring loom is, of course, there. It gives you the internal powered channel connections as well as your regular power earth and trigger and so on. Internal amplifying, this is actually class D. And so even though Alpine don't quote an RMS power figure, they claim about 50 watts RMS by four, which will be equivalent to anything else pretty much on the market. A separate loom is available for your front, rear and subwoofer RCA pre-outs, four volt RMS pre-outs for that. There is another separate connection for your steering wheel remote and your microphone input and yet again, another separate connection for your reverse camera. Is a proprietary connector for the two camera inputs on that wiring loom. It mates up to Alpine's own reverse cameras. If you wanna use a regular reverse camera that's just got a regular RCA connection, you're gonna need one of Alpine's special adapters for that. You'll see those on our website, but there'll probably be a link below for those. You also get your Bluetooth microphone, obviously a couple of packets of nuts and bolts to screw this all together. You get a GPS antenna for the wireless CarPlay, your DAB antenna for digital radio, some small brackets that will go on the side once this is in your car to make it all nice and neat from side angles, and your owner's manual that's a, a kind of a quick start guide for the full manual, you'll need to download a PDF for that. Let's jump in and have a look at the main features. So firing up, you're greeted by this page here, and this gives you access to all of your sources. So let's start with CarPlay. CarPlay and Android Auto work very, very similarly. It gives you access to the important apps that you need for communication, navigation, and for your audio sources. So obviously you'll have access to things like your maps, and then things like Box, Spotify, your podcast, music, and so on, and even having a split screen. Android Auto works very similarly. It's just swipe up and down instead of swiping left and right. Jump back to the main menu. So here we have regular radio, digital radio, your Bluetooth audio streaming from your phone if you choose to do it that way. Title is a subscription service for high resolution audio sources. An auxiliary input, HDMI input. Now you can connect a video source to that if you like. It's also how you access the phone mirroring with this. And that's a setup you need to do with a special cable from Alpine. For an iPhone, you'll need the adapter from Apple that gives you the HDMI connection. Alpine also sell their proprietary connectors for the two generations of Android phone. With the USB flash drive connected, you've got access to music including FLAC high-res files like this one here. If we press this button, it also can support 1080p videos. And this is a nine inch WXGA capacitive touchscreen. It's native resolution to 720p. And you can see here, the screen's absolutely magnificent. It looks fabulous. Jump across into setup. And this is where you'll set things like your screen lighting and illumination. Screen color can be changed to any of these different backgrounds. The keys on this are always white, however. Here you can set things like time. Also your preliminary setup for your devices. Wi-Fi here is how you access your wireless CarPlay. You'll also need to connect to Bluetooth for your wireless CarPlay to work. In function, it's where you set up a lot of the preset stuff for each of your sources and things like your dash cams. Closing that, let's go into the audio menu. So the audio menu, it's got a nice voltage display and your treble and bass can be adjusted directly here. If you touch here, you now get a slider to adjust your subwoofer level control. MX Media Expander has three levels. 
It's primarily for enhancing low quality bitrate MP3s. Bass Engine SQ, if we touch this a few times, you'll see standard, mid bass, rich, low bass, and punch. So that's Alpine's own proprietary EQ systems and they each have up to six levels of enhancement. So if you don't use Bass Engine SQ, you can actually use the full EQ setting in the system. It's described as a 56 band, but in truth what it is, there are 13 bands for each of the front left and right, rear left and rear right channels, and then an additional four bands for the subwoofer, giving a total of 56. But it is true parametric EQ, and that's really, really good. So what is parametric EQ, you ask? Good question. We've got a band here, and I can apply boost or cut like any EQ. But what I can also do is I can vary the center frequency and I can vary the width. So here's wide, here's medium, and here's narrow. That's a very accurate way of doing your equalizing and it's an excellent system from Alpine. What's also nice, you can jump across to another tuning section without having to go back to the main menu. So here's your general fader and balance. Here you can turn your subwoofer on and off and your back speakers on and off. You can jump over to time correction and this gives you a full six bands to tune with. Time correction is delaying speakers in the system so that they all arrive at your ear at the same point. And so you delay the ones that are closest to you so that they're the same length in path length from the furthest one for you, which is most of the time going to be the subwoofer in the car. Let's talk about the crossover. So a bit of a confusing one with this. For some reason, Alpine have decided to put a bandpass filter on both front and rear output channels. That's not particularly useful as far as I'm concerned. So I would just use the high pass filter in both of those channels. Also, in high pass mode, if I click front high pass filter and I decide to add a filter, I can have six, 12, 18, or 24 dB per octave of filter slope. The variable from 250 Hertz down to 25 Hertz. If I wanna add a low pass filter to that, I can. But once I add the low pass filter, I'm limited to 12 dB per octave. And there's no real reason to have a low pass filter on those channels if you don't have the ability to do a high pass from 4K and up to create a three-way system. So really, just use this as a traditional high pass, high pass, low pass, two-way crossover. The subwoofer low pass filter is also variable up to 24 dB per octave and from 20 to 250 Hertz. So that's it, Alpine's ILX F509A. Now don't forget, there's also an 11 inch version of this called the ILX F511A. If you can fit a bigger screen, why not? If you can't fit a floating screen, but you like all the features this unit has, there's also the standard double DIN unit that's identical in every other way. That's called the ILX 507A. So you'll grab a smoking deal at any of those on our website. Check links down below. While you're here, like and subscribe. See you next time.